Hey, what's up, guys? This is Alex, and today we're going to talk about FL Studio, which just got a new release last week, FL Studio 20, which opens up the compatibility with Mac. So I thought for the occasion of making this video where I'm going to share with you 30 FL Studio tips and tricks and shortcuts to make your workflow faster, just like my workflow that you see in my composing from scratch videos. We're going to start from number one, transposition. So you can transpose notes one semitone up if you do shift up, shift down is going to transpose them one uh, semitone down, control up transposes them one octave up and down it does one octave down. This can also be done on individual notes if you select them. Say I want to just to transpose this, control up, control down, etc. You can also select you know, individual notes by pressing control, shift, note. It's going to select all the notes in that note, pretty much. And then you can do shift and control on those things. Tip number two, cloning. Say you have a pattern like this one and you want to copy it. You can do copy paste, but that takes a bit of time, right? You can save time by selecting the notes and pressing control B. It's going to clone the notes to start right after the last one. Now, if you want to clone this pattern, but you want it to clone it and start at, you know, beat nine, then you select control left click on this bar, select until beat nine, press control B and it's going to clone it, um, you know, after the, the bar you selected. So if you do this and this saves you time, you can also do this on patterns. Tip number three, another type of cloning is if you select a note and you press shift and then drag it, it's going to clone the note and let you drag it. This also applies to patterns again. So if I do this here, whoop, it does it. It also does it on samples. So you can do this and you can clone them and that saves you time. Again, shift, click, drag. Tip number four, precision stretching. Say if you wanted to stretch a melody or not like this, but you want to do it by ignoring the grid, you can press alt while you drag and it's going to ignore the snap. It, this is useful if you want to write music in a way that is humanized and it doesn't align perfectly to the grid. And you see me doing all the time in my video. Tip number five, fast selection. If you want to select things quickly, press control and drag your mouse with the left click. It's going to select the notes and you can also do it in the playlist. But if you want to select multiple notes which are apart from each other, you can, say, you can press control shift and drag your mouse and it's going to sum all the different selections that you do. You can also cancel the selections. You can also do this on the playlist if you want. Tip number six, fast preview. You can click Alt plus right click to have a preview of a range of notes. Very useful if you need to check out your chords. You can also do it on patterns. So if I want to check out the pattern here, I can press Alt right click. Very useful. Tip number seven, edit events in piano roll. Say you have a MIDI chord like this one and you want it to swell a bit more. What you need to do is to do a draw on the automation curve for the mod wheel. So what you do is you open your MIDI channel. This is bar, BRSO articulated, by the way. You go on the control you want to draw the automation curve for, right click, edit events in piano roll, and then you can edit your events right in the piano roll so you can see them. And uh, if this is grayed out, it means that the events are already available here. So if you don't see edit events in a row, you can go here and search for your events and you can take care of them. If you need more precision, you can do edit events normally. This doesn't give you the view of what is happening, but you have more freedom. You can copy paste and all those things. Tip number eight, level scaling. Say, for example, you have like a pattern like this one and you want to increase the volume, like velocities of all the percussion, but you want to keep the ratio the same. What you can do is select the notes, alt and scroll up, it's going to increase all the velocities, or scroll down, it's going to decrease them. But say, for example, you want more precision, you can use level scaling. So you select the note, you press Alt X, and it's going to open this dialog where you can, you know, tweak these parameters to get a different result and get a different effect and impact in your velocities. You can also use the level scaling tool, for example, on your MIDI control command. So if, for example, you drew the MIDI um, automation like I showed you before, and you just want to make this automation a bit less powerful, you can press select this. If you're in the MIDI, like the edit events uh, pattern here, you can select this, press Alt X, and it's going to affect the MIDI control command instead of the velocities. So yeah, you can also do it on MIDI control commands. If you want to do it on velocities, you go here, go back to velocities, Alt X, and that's how it's done. Tip number nine, velocity humanization. Say, for example, you have a pattern like this one where all the velocities are the same. 
and you want to change that, what you need to do is select the nodes you want to alter, or if you want to act on the whole pattern, you just don't select anything, and you press Alt E, and it's going to open a dialog which is going to do things. So what you have to do is to, this dialog is going to have all these different tabs activated. You need to deactivate them all, except for the levels one. You need to activate work on existing score, and then after you did that, you tweak this, and this is going to change the velocities. It's going to randomize the velocities by this margin. And you also want to activate bipolar, so it's going to randomize them both up and down. So I'm going to show you what happens when I put work on existing score. If you check the velocities, you see they're changing. You can also press this to change the randomization a bit more. So you can do that if you want to randomize the velocities. Again, to do that, you press Alt-E. Tip number 10, randomize rhythm. So the thing we just did with velocities can be done with rhythm as well. Say, for example, you have a pattern like this one. And you want it to sound a bit more loose, a bit more human, a bit more, a bit of time. What you can do is use this slider here, the swing slider. You can find it on every pattern, and this affects the entire project. Basically, the more you increase this, the more uh, loose is going to be the way FL Studio reads this project. So some notes are going to be a bit shifted before, a bit shifted after. It's going to be a bit of a, like, it's going to have that randomic sort of essence to it. Very subtle. Well, if I put this to 0%, it's going to be precise. So a good thing to do is to set it to like 20%, because again, this is subtle, but it acts on the whole project. So every single node will have a randomic margin of error in rhythm. So that gives you that sort of human feel. If you enable it for two, uh, you make it too powerful, it's going to make it sound weird. So 20%, I think, is a good uh, place to leave it. That's where I leave it personally. So the swing parameter is on top of every uh, pattern here. Tip number 11, ghost notes. You might have noticed these grayed out notes in my patterns. If I right click on them twice, I'm gonna, it's gonna bring me to the instrument that these notes belong to, you know? And it's also useful because it shows you which notes are already, you know, being played in this pattern. You can activate them by going here, uh, view, no, sorry, helpers, ghost channels. And if you activate the editable ghosts, it's gonna let you, lead you to even edit these ghost notes if you want to. But I don't like to activate that. Tip number 12, precision drawing. So for example, if you want to draw the velocities for this pattern, but you want them to be progressive like this, you can right click and drag, and it's gonna be super precise. You can also do this on the MIDI control command, same thing if I want to do this, but more precise, right click, drag, and it's gonna be this straight line. Tip number 13, wipe screen. If your screen is cluttered with plugins, you can press F12 and it's gonna close everything. Then if you press F5, it's going to open the playlist. F6 brings up the channel tab. So F12, F5, F6 to make your project a bit more ordered. Tip number 14, link to the mixer made easy. Say, for example, you have a new sample in your song and you want to link this sample to the mixer. You can click here on track and it's going to link it to the first open or free mixer channel that it finds. And it's also going to rename it and color it accordingly. You can also do this by pressing Ctrl L on a sample or on a selection of your samples that you, you choose. Tip number 15, fast rename. If you press F2, you enable this where you can rename whatever you have at hand. You can do it with samples, you can do it with pattern names. So the last thing you selected is going to rename it with F2. Tip number 16, select tool. You can switch between a pen, brush, and cutter tool, slicing tool, by pressing P. B or C in your keyboard. This is only doable if you disable the typing keyboard to piano keyboard uh, button here. But it's very useful, so I will disable this and use BBC to switch among those tools. Tip number 17, instant slicing. You can do this by activating the slicing uh, tool and then right click and dragging. This is going to do this red line, which is just the slicing, but instead of just leaving the two halves, it's going to remove the smaller half instantly. So this is very useful. Again, right click and drag. Tip number 18, multiple undo. If you undo with Ctrl Z, it's going to undo the last step. But if you press Ctrl Z again, it's going to bring, bring it back forwards. So if you want to go back multiple levels, you can press Ctrl Alt Z multiple times until you're done undoing all the things. So Ctrl Alt Z does undo indefinitely. If you want to increase the step, like the, the undo levels, you can do it from the options somewhere here. General maximum undo levels are set 100. So I can do Ctrl Alt Z for 100 times. 
and uh, you can increase this or decrease this, you choose. Tip number 19, zooming out. If you have a pattern and you want to see the whole notes, press control, right click on an empty spot, and it's gonna zoom on the whole thing. If you press control, scroll up, it's gonna zoom on, zoom in, uh, scroll down while holding control, zooms out. Tip number 20, consolidating. Say if you have a pattern like this one, which consumes a lot of CPU. One cool thing you can do is to freeze this, and now you can do it on the spot by right-clicking on the, you know, the track where the pattern is. Click on consolidate this track from track start. You set your settings and you press start. This will consolidate the pattern and it will put an audio version of it right below it while uh, muting the MIDI version. And you can toggle, like you can go back to the MIDI version anytime. So this is a brand new way of freezing. Very useful if you want to save your RAM. Tip number 21, grouping tracks. Say you have two tracks like this ones in the playlist and you want to group them. You can right click on one to group with the both track and now they are linked. This will also enable uh, multiple functions like this one. This is a new one, which allows you to pretty much stretch them all together or split them. There's also other things you can do with grouped tracks. Tip number 22 is something you can do with the track groups. So muting or soloing. If you press alt and right click on any track of any group, it's gonna um, isolate that entire group. On the contrary, if you press alt and left click, it's gonna either activate or deactivate the entire group. This is very useful if you just want, for example, to hear the brass and the strings in your song, you do this. Forgive my CPU. But yeah, it gives you like having group tracks like this gives you freedom to isolate them or mute them at will. Another thing you can do to group your uh, patterns is to select them and press Shift G. This will group them in such a way that if you delete one, you're going to delete them all. If you select one, you're going to select them all. And if you move one, you're going to move them all. So you can do this. You can also do it on patterns that belong to different groups. For example, I can do this, Shift G, and I'm going to link this too. If you want to ungroup, you select and you press Alt G. This is also done uh, in the patterns with the notes. Say, for example, I'll, I want to group all the D notes. I go here, Control, Shift, uh, left click on D5, D4, D6, and all the Ds, and I press Shift G. Now all the D notes are linked. If I move them, they're going to move like that. If I transition them, transpose them, they're going to all transpose. And if I want to unlink them, again, Alt G. Tip number 23, using markers. You might have seen in my songs, these guys here. This, I use them to understand, like to delimit each part, and it's also useful if you want to skip from part to part. You just have to left click on a marker. The way do you, you set this up is you press Alt T, you give your marker a name, I'm gonna call this banana, and LFL Studio is gonna put the marker at the beginning, and then you can take it and drag it wherever you want to put it. Now, with FLC 20, you can also, I think, assign a different uh, time signature to each marker by doing add time signature. You, determine, you choose which one you can do. And uh, yeah, so markers now are more useful than ever thanks to FLC 20. And you can activate them by pressing Alt T. Tip 24, coloring. You can color your notes, like, for example, as I did here in this pattern. By going here, picking a color that you want, selecting the notes and pressing Alt C. It's going to read you to color these notes. The color in this case doesn't change anything. It has functions in some situations, but in this one, it doesn't. Although, you can do one cool thing. So I use color here to distinguish the, the notes that are the boldest, the one that I really want to have an impact. And one cool thing you can do is, based on color, you can select the notes. So if I go here and I select this color, and I press Shift-C, it's going to select all the notes corresponding to the active color I have here. So all these notes. And I can then press Alt X and just increase their tension like this. So now these orange notes are more loud. So I could select them thanks to Shift C. So using note colors can be useful for that. If you want to distinguish some certain notes and then you want to edit them differently, that can be useful. Or if you use colors in, for example, a contact instance, each color is going to correspond to a different MIDI channel. Or if you use colors with BRSO Articulate, each color is going to uh, correspond to an articulation. But that's something I talk about in the tutorial about BRSO Articulate. So if you're interested in that, go check out that tutorial. Again, to give colors, you select Alt-C. And to select colors, Shift-C. Tip number 25, soloing in the mixer. So if you have something like this, or you just want to concentrate on a single instrument family, you press Alt-S on the mixer group of that family. It's going to isolate that group along with all these children. 
can also do it on a particular instrument, Alt S, isolating the violas. If I press it again, it's gonna bring it back to the whole thing. It's very useful if you only to want to focus on a single instrument family or instrument group. Alt S. Tip number 26, chopping notes. This is useful if you want to create a percussion roll. If you have a longer note like this one and you press Alt U, it's gonna do this. Open this window, you can use this to make notes a bit smaller and then you can tweak their velocities and do this. So you have a percussion roll done very easily with Alt U. Tip number 27, quantization. So quantization is useful if you have notes which are a bit loose like this and you want to align them perfectly to the grid. What you do is you select the notes, you press Ctrl Q and it's gonna align them depending on what the grid is. Now these are actually triplets. So if we want to quantize them perfectly to how they are supposed to be, I'm gonna go here, change the grid to triplets, one third beats, Ctrl Q, and it's gonna quantize them depending on the grid. You can also quantize more advancedly in a more advanced way if you press Alt Q, so you have more parameters, stuff like that. Stuff like that. But I use usually Control Q, and I assign my, I change my grid depending on how I want this rhythm to be quantized. Tip number twenty-eight: fast saving. If you want to save your project fast, you can press Control S. It's gonna save it. If you press Control N, it's gonna save a new version, so that leaves the old version in your hard drive safe to be recovered. Control S or Control N. Tip number 29, purging. If you have loads of audio clips that you're not using in your track anymore, you have loads of channels that you're not using that are there occupying your RAM, one thing you can do is to go on tools, macros, and either do purge and use audio clips, which is gonna delete all the audio clips which are not being used, or you can click select a news channel. This is gonna take a few um, a moment to select all the channels that you're not using in your track, you know, these green ones. And if I press and you del I delete, it's gonna remove all of them. Now, this selects the ones with empty, like that have no notes into them. But in this case, you see my contact instances are being selected as well. But I'm using these contact instances with the MIDI outs. So you should be wary of what you're deleting when you use the select in unused channels, because sometimes you're using those channels, but you're using them on MIDI outs instead of the channel themselves. But it's useful in general if you, you know, want to get your project rid of extra things that are occupying your RAM or CPU. Tip number 30, the last one. This is if you want to save CPU done easily, you go on options, audio, and you press on smart disable. What it's gonna do is whenever a plugin stays idle for like five seconds in your song, it's gonna disable it. So it saves a bit of that CPU because it's not processing that plugin at all. And as soon as that plugin gets a new note or new signal, it's gonna enable it instantly, so it acts. So this makes it so that, you know, plugins don't stand idle in the background, consuming energy for no reason, consuming CPU for no reason. So, you know, smart disable in the options, very useful, but you should also, you know, be aware that it might lead to strange things like graphical bugs and that only get solved when you press a note and activate that plugin. So. I use it sometimes, but not all the time, but it can lead you to save CPU. Another thing you can do is here in the resampling quality, you can lower it. It's gonna use less CPU on the playback of your song, but whenever you export your song, ideally you want to keep the settings high. So I, in this case, when I'm exporting, I put the resampling to 500, 12 point sync and 24 bits or 32 bits or something like that. But in the playback, you can reduce it. It's gonna sound a bit worse, but it's gonna use less of your CPU. So those are the 30 tips on FL Studio 20. I hope they were useful to you. Some are about speeding your workflow. Others were more about optimization, optimizing your project and your CPU usage. And if you have more like new tips that you want to share, if it's something I forgot to say, please add it on the comments of this video and please share this video with any FL Studio producer who might earn value out of it. So that is all for this video. Again, FOC 20 just got released a couple of weeks ago. If you want to get your Mac, you can do it now. And uh, if you haven't, you can upgrade. All upgrades on FOC Studio are free. So if you are still on the old version, go on ImageLine's website and download your FOC Studio 20 right away because it's freaking awesome. That is all for this video and I'll see you in the next one.